Though World War II has been depicted countless times on the big screen, one film, and one scene in particular, has been hailed by historians and by the men who survived the event as the most accurate portrayal of war ever committed to film. Today, in belated honor of D-Day, we take an in-depth look at the storming of Omaha Beach in Saving Private Ryan. June 6, 1944, 156,000 American, British, and Canadian soldiers landed on a 50-mile stretch of France's Normandy coast, which was heavily fortified by German forces. Known as D-Day, it was among the largest amphibious military assault in history. An estimated 4,000 Allied troops were killed in the initial invasion, but the battle came to be seen as the beginning of the end of World War II in Europe. Within a week, the beach had been secured by the Allies. Within two months, all of northern France had been liberated, and by the following spring, Germany had been defeated. Fifty years later, screenwriter Robert Rodat was reading about the liberation of Western Europe and was struck by one story in particular. It mentioned a young private whose brothers were all killed in combat within the space of a week. He was then rescued from the battle to keep his entire family from being wiped out. The sole survivor policy was adopted earlier in the war after the five Sullivan brothers were killed while serving together in the South Pacific. Rodat pitched the idea to producer Mark Gordon, and after reading the screenplay, Steven Spielberg came on board to direct. The son of a World War II veteran, he had long been fascinated with the era, and had been heavily influenced by the war films of his youth, as evident in his earliest filmmaking. Spielberg knew that he wanted to honor those who fought by showing the real horrors of combat, not a stylized Hollywood version of bravery. Shaking hands and seasick vomiting don't signify weakness through his lens. They signify humanity. In a film full of battle scenes, the most challenging sequence was the earliest, the storming of Omaha Beach in which a thousand actors playing allied soldiers struggle ashore amid explosions and potentially dangerous stunts. Pre-production was especially important for the film. The actual beach at Normandy is a protected historical landmark and has highly restricted filming policies. But after weeks of research, production designer Tom Sanders settled on a stretch of coastline to stand in for the golden sand and the line of cliffs at Omaha Beach. The sequence was shot over 15 days and involved 1,500 people, including the 1,000 Irish Army reservists hired to accurately portray soldiers. Since very few of the uniforms from World War II still exist, costumer and designer Joanna Johnston and her team had to recreate 3,000 authentic uniforms. She also found the company that made the original troops boots and ordered 2,000 pairs. When I took the job on, I rather stupidly thought that it was going to be incredibly easy because I just sort of gather all these uniforms. <laughs> and then I started and I found that they didn't exist. During the storming of the beach, the extras were under the command of the film's military advisor, former U.S. Marine Corps Captain Dale Dye. On that BAR, stand by! Who in pre-production put the Corps actors through a miserable boot camp that bonded them as a unit and prepared them for the harsh conditions on set. You have to understand, we're essentially playing guys who are tired and miserable, uh, of whom great physical things are being demanded of constantly. And, and we couldn't have done that without having gone through something like Dale Dye put us through. They all sun guys into your position, please. About a minute away, guys. Though meticulous in other preparations, including consulting with noted World War II historian Stephen Ambrose, Spielberg did not storyboard Saving Private Ryan. This was unusual for him. If this camera's a waste, I would actually go up on top of the tank. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. shoot over the yeah, top. Yeah. Why don't you do that now? Instead, he wanted his camera placement to be inspired by the action and to have a spontaneous reaction while shooting the scenes as they played out. Stay with him. It's going to rise up with him. He's going to shoot at that and then come right back down again. The result, especially in this sequence, is that the viewer is put directly into the chaos of war. I'm in love, Deaths are not dashing or glamorous. Many are killed even before they reach the beach. Others drown senselessly under the weight of their gear. 
To get these grisly underwater shots, which mimic the point of view of a soldier scrambling toward land, a camera on a crane was placed on a 40-foot trailer and backed into the sea. For the look of the film, which Spielberg wanted to be desaturated and decidedly low-tech, he turned to frequent collaborator and cinematographer Janusz Kaminski, who stripped the modern protective coating from his camera lenses to give them a softer, more diffused look. He also put the negative through an additional process to extract more of the color. And most importantly, for the battle scenes, and this one in particular, 45 degree and 90 degree shutters instead of the standard 180 degree shutters. This shortened the amount of time the film was exposed and resulted in a very staccato feel to the actor's movements because it removes any movement blur. It also adds a crispness to the explosions, which Spielberg said made them even more frightening. Everything becomes slightly more realistic and individual raindrops and dirt particles become more apparent to the audience. Part of Saving Private Ryan's legacy is its epic feel on the battlefield, which required some serious work to capture on film. This shot from the machine gun tower that Spielberg used to emphasize how easy it was to hit those storming the beach required a whole night of laying out squibs, and then they had just two takes to get it right before the crew would have to spend a whole night laying out tons of squibs again. While we're talking squibs, Spielberg had his effects crew trick out the guns on screen so that when the actors fired blanks, a signal would be sent to the squib pack on another actor. So pulling the trigger would both fire a blank and set off the squib on the other target with distance taken into consideration. Another important directorial decision is the sound, or lack thereof. In place of an epic score, there is simply the roaring cacophony of war, which drops out altogether on the beach, mimicking the psychological stress of Tom Hanks' Captain Miller. It was an idea of Stevens to have these moments where the Tom Hanks character would be shell-shocked, would take the battle in without normal sound. And I imagine, I remember the sound of listening to a seashell, but to kind of simulate that, I recorded ocean sounds, played them over a speaker, and then recorded them with a microphone through a long tube. It's like a psychological tea whistle that rises and, and, and peaks right when we snap back into reality. Once on the beach, many of the horrifically injured soldiers are being portrayed by actors who were also amputees, which allows the graphic wounds to appear even more realistic. Also adding to the sickening realism are a thousand detailed dummies that were meticulously created by prosthetics engineers that litter the beach, itself awash in hundreds of gallons of fake blood. As a viewer, the shock of the initial onslaught wanes as Captain Miller takes charge of his men. There are still moments of unrelenting horror, but the nightmare settles into something almost worse, a recognizable reality. <laughs> 6.5 million Americans saw Saving Private Ryan its opening weekend in 1998. The veterans who survived Omaha Beach praised its accurate depiction of their experience. In fact, it evoked such vivid memories that the Veterans Administration set up a hotline for veterans. And in the first week, America Online reported that there were 14,000 postings in chat rooms about the film. Messages were coming in at a rate of 25 per minute, which at the time was the highest rate in AOL history. Saving Private Ryan won five Oscars, including Best Director for Steven Spielberg, who was also honored by the Secretary of the Army with the military's highest civilian honor, the Distinguished Civilian Service Award. The film was recently included in the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress, and it marks the first professional collaboration between Spielberg and Hanks, who went on to make the World War II miniseries Band of Brothers and The Pacific. The New York Times didn't call it Spielberg's War for Nothing. Uh, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed watching Art of the Scene as much as we enjoyed making it. Saving Private Ryan is an amazing movie throughout, uh, but obviously this is one of the best scenes. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, let us know in the comments below some of your favorite or iconic scenes that you'd like to see us do here on the show. And as always, subscribe to Cinepix for more great movie content. We'll see you next time, guys.